Hello, my name is Brad Phillips. I'm here with Puppy Steps Training and we're going to be doing Rocco's demonstration for you today. Uh, we're very excited to send him home to you. He is such a wonderful dog. He's very easy to train, very loving, and we're just really happy with the way that he's turned out and I think you will be, will be as well. Um, through this demonstration we're going to go through our entire program, um, all five steps which are socialization, manners, obedience commands, house training, and leash training. Now before we jump right into it, just a few things that I like to remind everyone. Um, the first and foremost is that he is a puppy and he is a, a living, breathing animal. And so with that he's subject to, to change in his environment. So that's basically the next two weeks are going to be very stressful for him. It will be that transition period. And so make sure that you give him time to adjust and give him time to get used to you. Um, which basically don't be really hard on him. If he seems stressed out, don't do long intense training periods. Give him time to get used to his surroundings. And you know, with his commands such as like his stays and things like that, give him time to build back up to the expectation that we've set. Um, if you can tell that he's getting uh, stressed out or frustrated, end with the correct behavior and then just cut the training session short. Also maybe ease the distractions, things like that. Just help him get used to you and feel at home before you really start being uh, going through the intensive training. Um, other things that I like to just let people know is one, you're going to be hearing me use the word okay quite a bit. And that's because that's our marker as well as our release word. So it marks the correct behavior, releases from a stay. Also, you may hear me use the word no, which is our correction term. And we use that term kind of like a misdemeanor felony. So if he does something wrong, like breaks a stay, I'm going to tell him no and I'm going to do it again. But I'm not going to be incredibly hard on him. Whereas if he does something more serious, like jumps on me or tries to steal food, I'll really adjust myself and give him more of a firm correction. And I do that by adjusting my body language and my voice fluctuation. Because those are the two things that a dog reads. And they take a correction that way a lot better than like a physical correction. You should never have to um, hit your dog or anything like that. But just adjusting the way that, adjusting your demeanor basically. So with that being said, we're going to hop right into our demonstration. And we'll start with our socialization. Now, socialization is the most important thing to me. That's when that, really that time period is between about 6 weeks to 12 weeks. And that's when a dog's going to decide what he's afraid of and what he's not. And so during that critical time, we make sure that we uh, gradually introduce our dogs to as many new situations as possible. I want to protect against having an anxious or an aggressive or a timid dog. And so we get him used to being around different animals, whether it's dogs, cats, horses, cows, things of that sort. We also get him used to different sounds. Um, that's a big one. Uh, whether it's playing with toys on the floor, just hearing that, even being around the object, as well as surfaces. That's another one that a lot of people don't realize, but if you just do commands on the carpet, he, as soon as you try and do it on the hardwood floor, it might trip him up. And so we try and expose them to as many new things as possible. Um, as well as I focus on that throughout the remainder of the program. Doing the commands on different surfaces, like I said, even doing it with distractions as cars drive by or having a cat walk around. Like I said, we just really want to make sure we're protecting against um, bringing him into a new environment and having him freeze up or be timid and try and bolt, things like that. And so that's why that's the most important thing to me is just because I want my dog to be comfortable in new situations. So now we're going to move into our manners. Um, we'll start with our gates and our doorways. Anytime he comes out of the crate or through the door, I expect him to hold a stay. Now that should be something he does automatically. I shouldn't have to tell him. If he ever does try and break, I might simply shut the door, lift my leg, just kind of block him and remind him what he's doing. Okay, 
Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Um, and that's the same expectation for the house door, which you'll see here in a moment when we take him out. Um, but we'll just continue through our manners. Which the next one would be his greeting. So anytime I call him to me or he approaches me, I expect him to sit as another automatic behavior. I shouldn't have to tell him anything like that. Rocco, come here. And so before he gets any attention, he's going to have to sit. Now, that's uh, really nice because one, that keeps him from jumping on you or wrapping you up with a leash, anything like that. But the, the biggest thing is you get his eye contact. And so dogs have a single track mind. Whatever they're looking at, that's what they're thinking about. So if you have his eyes, you have his attention. And so then you can give him further commands or even he's just sitting ready for you to, to pet him, anything like that. Oh, good boy. Uh, next we'll go into his mealtime manners. Anytime I feed him, I expect him to hold a sit stay. Come here. Sit. Stay. Now this is a really great time to work on those stays. We have what we call they're the three D's. That's distance, duration, and distraction. And so all those things really build a solid stay. And so I can move this food ball around. Talking is a great distraction. Uh, closing the distance with the food bowl, lengthening it, stepping away. We just add a, a lot of different things at this time to really work on those stays. And he has a, just a phenomenal stay. Okay, good boy. Now, real quick while he's eating, um, we'll talk a little bit about aggression. So I want to make a, an effort while he's eating a lot of times to put my hands down in his food bowl. That way I'm protecting against having any type of aggression. A lot of people think that they have uh, you know, the, well, the most well-mannered or the nicest dog in the world and then they're surprised when a toddler grows up and sticks his hands down in the food bowl and then they get growled or nipped at. So I really want to prevent having any type of accidents like that. Along with that same, uh, same behavior, not necessarily why he's eating, but we always make, make an effort to handle, whether it be his paws, his ears, his tail, all these sensitive areas of a dog. I want to make sure that he doesn't have any aggression towards me over handling those, those areas. And that's really handy when you take him in to get his nails clipped or grooming. I want to make sure that he's comfortable with being handled and that he's not going to get aggressive over that. Another type of aggression um, that is mistaken a lot is with children. So they're like the greatest thing to a dog. They're the perfect size. They run, they squeal, they make things just a lot of fun. And the dog wants to play along, so he ends up grabbing a pant leg or an arm. And a lot of people will freak out over that, right? So our recommendation is that anytime he plays with children, that you have them have a toy. Something that they can either dangle off to the side or throw just to involve him so that those mishaps don't end up happening. And we really work on preventing any type of aggression, whether it is over food or toys or, or anything like that, we want to prevent it. And so we make a habit of having other dogs around him when he eats or when he has a chew or anything like that. Um, and so that's, and that's very important just to make sure that he's socialized to those certain or those circumstances just to protect against having any accidents like that. So other things that we work on in this section, another big one for me is jumping. That's probably my biggest pet peeve is when a dog jumps on me. And so we've instilled the command off and so if he ever does try and jump up, whether it be on me or on to anything else, I expect him to get off when given that command. And if you have him by the leash, that's a great time to give him a leash correction. Now that's not a jerk on the leash, but we just give him two uh, little pops and so it just lets him know that we're there and it's correction. And so I'll do that with saying off. Um, now another important thing for any of your guests is that if he does want to jump up on him or looks like he's going to jump off, jump up, never step backwards. As soon as someone steps backwards, it's encouraging that jump. And so you always want to step 
into them and it restricts the space, makes it so they can't get up. And then if they do get up, you can quickly bring your knee and block them. As well as that sign, it shows a sign of dominance if you can catch them in the chest and flip them onto their back. Um, other things that we work on um, that's especially important with puppies is chewing. Now, he's teething right now and so he has the need to chew. And so we train on a base of avoiding and replacing. If you can avoid giving him free access to shoes, to toys, to pillows, things like that, I mean, that's going to save you um, having a lot of accidents like that. Now, that's not really possible in your home. There's always something he has access to, whether it's a table leg or a chair, something of that sort. And so that's when replacing comes in. And this is very important within that transition period because you want to teach him what's your property and what's his. And so if he goes up to like a table leg and tries to chew on it, I'm going to tell him no, I'll give him a leash correction, and I'll give him something of equal texture. And so if it's something hard, I'll give him a bully stick. If it's something soft like his bed, I'll give him kind of a plush toy. And that, uh, that teaches them what's yours and what's theirs and what they can and can't chew on. So one of the biggest times, one of the main times that disasters happen are when the dog's bored. Whether that be um, when he's just laying around during the day or if he just gets bored with um, the toy that he has. And so it's important that you know if you just have a downtime or you know, when he's just going to be relaxing you can just give him something to chew on. And as soon as he's done chewing on that, take it away. That way you're going to maintain the excitement that he has for that object. And he's not just going to keep having access to it and get bored and move on to something else. And that'll save you a lot of problems. So the next two, um, or the last two of our manners are gently and drop it. So both of which have to deal with him being aware of his mouth. Uh, gently is just having him take the treat very soft or being uh, careful taking something from you. So if I can see that he's excited, I'm going to tell him gently before I even give it to him. Uh, but if he ever just reaches for a treat, you can just pull back and say gently, and then expect him to be very careful taking the treat. Now along with that, I'll always give him a treat in the palm of my hand. That way, if he is excited, I can close my fist and block him from getting the treat until he's calmed down. Whereas if you give it between your thumb and forefinger, you're just asking him to catch your fingers. And, uh, and we don't want that to happen. And so I'll just tell him gently and expect him to be very, very cautious with his mouth. Uh, the last one, drop it, um, it's actually, I, I expect him to do it out of being well-mannered, as well as I expect him to do it on command. And so, the important thing is that he physically releases it. And so I'm going to tell him, well, we'll let him get a hold of it first. No, you're not going to take it right now. Drop it. Good boy, good boy. Hey, he just opens his mouth and gives it up. Drop it. Good boy. Now you have to be very cautious, especially while he's teething. If he has something soft, like this goose, um, that you don't, unless he doesn't want to get it, you just want to make sure that you're not pulling it out of his mouth because his teeth can easily get caught in that and you can end up pulling out a tooth and hurting him. And so you really want to make sure that he just opens that mouth. Now, uh, two ways that I work with it, if, if he ever has something that he just doesn't want to let go, uh, one, if it's long enough, and you can get on both sides, but I'll just take it on both sides and I'll hold it really still, just making it very unappealing. And if that doesn't cause him to give it up, I'll just turn my knuckles in. And that way you're catching, you're just kind of pinching his lips against his canines. Makes it a little bit uncomfortable and generally they'll just open their mouth. Come on, buddy. I'm going to steal my treats. So uh, that's it for our manners section. And now we'll move into our commands. So we have um, eight commands that we really focus on in this section. And that's come, watch me, sit, sit, stay, down, down, stay, crate, and go to bed. And so uh, we'll start with the most basic, the ones that we teach from day one. And those are watch me and come. And so, watch me is just basically to get his eye contact. So we'll see if we can get him to look away. 
That's the hard part, is getting it out of the way. Maybe we'll have to throw this one in randomly when he's not looking. But the sole purpose of that command, like I said, to get his eye contact, it goes back to what I said about his greeting. When you have their eye contact, you have 100% of his attention. And so, if you just need him to look to give him further commands, that's a good command to go to. As well as that's a great one to practice, just to get him used to the way that you say things. And so, you can sit there and try and distract him, and then say it and reward him. Just say it and reward him. Just kind of get him used to that. As well as that's going to really enforce that command so it's there when you need it. Uh, the second one is come. So, Rocco, come! Good boy. And all that is is getting him to come to you. All right. We've worked on that one a lot outside, getting some greater distances, making sure that that one's really, uh, that it's firm with him. Because that's a really important command for me. I don't want my dog running off or getting into trouble. And so I keep, to really sh I keep a really strict rule of 10 to 1, to where I'm going to call him to me and reward him 10 times for every one time I have to call him to come. That way the integrity of that command is going to be there when you need it. And so we basically make it a game. You call him to you, give him a reward, send him out again. As soon as he gets out, always call him again. And so it's just back and forth, but it's making it fun for him. He's getting a reward every time. And once again, it goes back to that one time when even you don't have a reward on you and you need him to turn around and come to you, uh, it's intact. Oh, buddy. The, the next three commands have hand signals. And so that's sit, which is just a scoop over the nose. Down, is just a downward motion like that. And stay is just a stop sign. And so both sit and down have stays attached to them. So where he's sitting, I'll show you. Down, stay. Now if I put him in a down stay, he's never allowed to come up into a sitting position. Whereas if I put him in a sit stay, and he lays down, I'm completely fine with that. Okay, good boy, good boy. Now we'll show you sit. And we'll bring it over here. Sit. Stay. <coughs> now we've tried to really work on these distractions and making sure that he's going to stay. Okay, good boy, good boy. He does have a great stay, but don't be satisfied with it. Continue to work on it and make sure that he's he's really got that, that down and that you're really working on that length. So the next two commands don't necessarily have hand signals, but I'll always put myself in a position where he can read my body language, whether I'm pointing or stepping towards or just being close. Now these commands are crate and go to bed. Go to bed. Now go to bed, I don't care what position he's in as long as all four paws are on the bed. As well as I expect him to stay when put there. Okay, good boy. Now also, being released from those two places is a reward in itself. And so when I release him, I don't give him a reward. Great. Boy. Okay. Watch me. Okay. And so just getting him to look at me. Where he was distracted there, I figured I'd throw it in. Watch me. Okay, good boy. Good boy. Uh, so now we'll move into our crate training and our house training. Now I'm going to give him something to chew on because this is a little bit more talking at first and less uh, involved for him. So with his crate training we worked very hard to make sure that he's comfortable in his crate. And right now he's good to sleep between 8 and 10 hours uh, through the night. We usually put him in around 10 o'clock and let him out between 6.30 and 7. 
He's also good to be in there for upwards of four hours during the day. So if you need to run errands, you can put him in the crate and he should be completely comfortable in there. Now, during that, this transition period, it's very common, like I said earlier, for the dog to get diarrhea. And so if he does um, start whining in the crate, it's best just to let him out, give him a break, and then put him right back in. Um, that way he's not going to be having accidents in the crate. And by putting him right back in, uh, you're, you're making sure that he doesn't realize or doesn't come to understand that whining will get him out of the crate. And so you really want to make sure that he doesn't make that connection uh, so that he doesn't sit there and whine. <clears throat> now, um, we'll start talking about his house training. Now, he has a very large bladder. He can hold it for a very long period of time. Uh, we, that's why we kept him extra to make sure that that was solid. Now, he hasn't had any accidents in the house for a long time. In fact, he held his bladder the other day for six and a half hours. So I feel completely confident that he's going to be great for you. Now, uh, he does know how to ring a bell when he needs to go to the bathroom, as well as he knows where his spot is and really what all that means. But that's going to be the biggest transition over to your home. And so there's two ways that I like to do this. Um, one is as soon as you get him home, take him out to wherever you've designated for him to go to the bathroom. Give him time to go. As soon as he goes, make it very rewarding. And so you're going to mark the behavior. And our marker word for going to the bathroom is outside. And so as soon as he goes, I'm going to tell him, good outside, good boy. Give him treats, give him praise, make sure that it's very, very rewarding. After that point, I'll bring him in and I'll take the bell and I'll either put some bacon grease or something that smells really good on that bell and let him seek it out. As soon as he touches the bell, even though he's probably going to be licking it, you're going to mark the behavior. And so I'll say, you want to go outside? Let's go outside. Really emphasizing the word outside. And then you'll take him out by the leash, give him a minute or two to go, and then come right back in. Um, immediately he'll turn around and he'll touch the bell. And so you'll do the same thing. You want to go outside? Take him out, give him a minute or two, come back in. Now I'll do this about for about 10 repetitions giving him a lot of opportunities to go to the bathroom. If he does squat or go, I'm going to make it very, very rewarding, lots of praise. Uh, after that, I'll clean the bell off, make sure that the door frame's clean, and usually they'll go up and they'll ring the bell again looking for whatever was on it. And so you'll do the same thing. Take him out, come right back in. It's very important that you never let him play uh, when he rings the bell. Otherwise, he'll start ringing the bell just to go outside and play. Uh, after he's done that a handful of times, I'll set the timer for 30 minutes. And every 30 minutes, I'll take him out. Now, that's just for the next day or so, just to give him time to adjust, at which I'll start to build up that timer. Go from 30 minutes to 45, to an hour, to two hours. Now, generally, two hours is our standard, uh, but like I said, he has a very large bladder. Uh, so the second way to do, uh, to transition the house training, is I'll target the bell. And so what I would do is I would take the bell and I would just hang it right down in front of him. Now I'm not going to do this uh, with him right now, just because he'll start ringing the bell quite a bit. And that's what I want to happen at your house. I want to give him as many opportunities to ring the bell and as many repetitions as I can give. And so you'll just hold this right in front of his nose. And every time he touches it, you'll say, okay, and I'll give him a treat. Every time, okay, okay. I'll do this about ten times, and then I'll move over to the door. And I'll hang it off the door. And I'll just sit here, just the same. Start with okay, but I'll only do that about two or three times with the word okay, and then I'll switch to using the word outside. Um, and I'll do that five or six times, outside, outside, just giving him a treat, making it very, very rewarding to ring the bell. After doing that about five times, then I'll switch and I'll take him out. So I'll ring the bell, tell him, let's go outside, do you want to go outside? Go out, give him a minute or two. If he goes, make it very rewarding. If he doesn't, come right back in. And at that point, I'll just stay near, let him ring it again, and do it a couple times, uh, that same approach. Now, um, still after I do that a handful of times, I'll set the 30 minute timer and I'll build up. Now after the 30 minute timer were to go off, I would take him over 
let him ring the bell, and then take him outside, giving him the opportunity to ring it himself. Now, I'll show you that real quick, and then we'll talk about his leash training. So, <clears throat> drop that. Good boy. Good boy. So if that 30 minute timer went off, I would bring him over, hang the bell out. Okay, outside. Do you want to go outside? Give him a treat and we'll go outside. Okay. Okay. Also make sure that he waits at the doorway. There you go. So if you guys have any questions about that, please let me know. I'll make sure the, that I help you through the best that I can. Um, so now we'll talk about his leash training and then we'll go outside and I'll show you that. <clears throat> so I take him on two types of walks. Uh, the first is an off leash or a long lead walk. Uh, that's just for him to be a dog. Let him run around to sniff, to play, swim, uh, do whatever he would like to. Now, when I take him on that type of walk, I like to make sure that he checks in. And so every minute or two, I'm going to call him to come to me, give him a reward, and let him go again. And so that keeps him close as well as it really builds on that, that come command. Now, the second type of walk is an attention walk. And so that's when he pays attention to me, ignores all the distractions around, and he basically, or he walks in a basic hill position, continually checking in with me. And with that, we have two commands. One is let's go, just signifying we're moving. And the second is easy. And that's if he's starting to pull. I'll give him a little leash correction and tell him easy. Now, if he tries to really pull, um, and he doesn't immediately respond to easy, I'll turn around and start walking the other direction and let him catch back up and then I'll continue the direction we are going. And if it's a distraction he was trying to get to, I'm going to slowly walk him up to that, but making sure that he's paying attention to me and that he's trying to ignore that distraction. And so we'll walk out to the road and I'll show you what that walk looks like as well as we've taught him to walk on the right side. And, um, and that'll be... That'll be the end of our demonstration. have any questions please let me know we've really enjoyed working with him he's been a phenomenal dog I think you'll really enjoy him and we appreciate uh, your support and hope that he's everything you imagined thank you